Last week, Energy Media published a video news story about my trip to the Alberta Carbon Conversion Technology Center in Southeast Calgary and about how there are companies there, uh, these are startup companies by and large, who are turning captured carbon dioxide into products, vodka, soap, cloth. There are a wide range of products that can be made with this. And this, the, these advanced materials are maybe the next generation of manufacturing. And there's an opportunity for Alberta to get out in front of this. So I'm going to talk to Bonnie Drzdowski. She is the Director of Environmental Center Services at InnoTech, which owns the center. So welcome uh, to the interview, Bonnie. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, I was really fascinated by the interviews that I did there because, um, let me back up a little bit. The company that built the the capture equipment, um, Delta Clean Tech, was telling me last uh, earlier this year that their work in China is to capture CO2 so that it can be used by companies to make products. And it seems like China, once again, is out in front of this new industry. But given that Alberta is going to be, uh, you know, a big uh, kind of the center of carbon capture in Canada, this seems like the perfect link it linked industry for Alberta to nurture and grow over time. Have, have I kind of got the the, uh, you know, what you're trying to do at the center? Have I got that correct? Yeah, we're, we're taking an integrated approach to CCUS and really think that there's an opportunity to be able to build um, utilization into the, the CCUS picture that has a much larger emphasis, creating opportunity, not just for companies, but um, who are developing the technologies, but for the industries themselves to create a more circular economy, generate products from the wastes that we're generating and put that back into manufacturing, into all kinds of different value added products. Um, and so we're trying to be able to get ahead on the industry component to be able to get some of those technologies commercial ready for adoption and implementation. Now, you're out talking to industry folks, to innovators. Uh, I interviewed um, uh, Apoor Sinha of Carbon Upcycle. I mean, these are impressive folks. Yes. Uh, you know, they're smart. They're very innovative. They're on the cutting edge of the technologies, often developing those technologies. What is the industry writ large telling you about the op the magnitude of the opportunity? Is this a big opportunity, a little opportunity? How excited should Albertans get about it? That's a great question. I think from an industry perspective, there's there's a mixed um, perspective in terms of the opportunity going forward. I think that industry right now is so focused on 2030 targets that then can um, be more of a result of carbon capture and sequestration that they haven't yet even begun to really look at the big opportunity associated with utilization. One of the biggest advantages that I think that we have in the short term is the, the sequestration hubs that have been announced within the province, creating an opportunity for a congregated area for utilization to become an actual real industry. And so not all of that CO2 that can be sequestered needs to be. We can actually in integrate utilization within those hubs to be able to actually create a lot of opportunity. And industry is really quite interested in that as a subsequent phase to what they're currently doing. The other thing from an industry perspective that I think that um, we're hearing primarily is that we need technologies that are commercial ready uh, that can be integrated into industry um, operations now. And so some of the value added components that can be converted to things like DME um, fuels uh, for fuel switching, um, some of the methanol and ethanol components are going to get uptaken faster than some of the more novel um, opportunities in the carbon fiber space. Uh, that really can create opportunities within the manufacturing sector. So I think it's going to be a transition where we're going to integrate different utilization technologies at a different pace. And, and our support to be able to ensure that these technologies are commercial ready for adoption when the industry is ready to be able to integrate within some of the, the hub opportunities is really going to be where we're going to start to see it take off. Yeah, for, just for our, our viewers who maybe aren't familiar with uh, economic development uh, theory or, or practice, um, hubs are collections of industry that's, you know, there might be like a, a big uh, growth pole, a big industry that is the anchor for that hub. And then there are all sorts of, that's, and then supply chain companies locate there. 
And then they have synergies between each other. And that's how the, the hub grows. There are backward linkages where you sell inputs into the big industry. There are forward linkages where you take the product of that industry and make something else with it. There's new technology linkages. And it's all those linkages that may make the hub grow over time. And and I so I think the, the hub approach to this, uh, we'll call it a cluster, there's all sorts of different names for it. But I think this is really a, a smart way to go. Um, what's the potential for the center to grow? Great question. Actually, we're in conversations with industry right now to be able to really identify how the, the facility can help to be able to facilitate that transition faster. So we want to ensure that we're getting ahead of where we're currently at. And the, in, the facility itself has insane opportunity to be able to do that because the concentrated CO2 as well as the low concentration CO2 mean that we can offer a range of um, products to be able to utilize in conversion technologies. And from that perspective then, the, the opportunity within the facility to be able to grow and support those technologies is really going to be driven by industry. So we're, we're currently um, expanding the facility to be able to integrate hydrogen components as well so that we can ensure that we're making the most of both the CO2 molecule and the hydrogen molecule from a conversion perspective. And so over time, I think that the, the facility will transition from just technology developers wanting to de-risk and demonstrate to industry actually approaching uh, us with those technologies to be able to bring forward and de-risk and get them ready to go in terms of commercial implementation at a faster pace. So we're hoping 2023 will actually enable that from the industry side of things. Uh, and then we can see where it can go from there. So currently the hydrogen component getting integrated through the Hydrogen Center for Excellence is a really great opportunity on the conversion side of things to make sure that different conversion technologies can be demonstrated at the, the facility itself. Now, um, we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, the scale of uh, CCUS in Alberta, uh, right? Globally, there's about 40 million uh, tons, uh, sorry, 40 tons uh, of CO2 that's captured. Was it 40 million tons? Now I'm going to have to go back and check, <laughs> but I'll do that. Uh, anyway, and seven of them are are uh, are captured in in uh, in Canada, and most of that in in Alberta. So we've got a competitive advantage on a cost, hopefully, uh, a cost effective source of CO two. Okay, so that's one. But there's a com another competitive advantage that that Alberta, and particularly Calgary, has that doesn't get enough attention, and that's its human capital. There is so engineering and designing and and scientists and so on, particularly in Ca Calgary, that th that sector, you know, sort of grew up uh, with the, the oil and gas industry, particularly the oil sands. And it seems to me that all that expertise, all the, those engineering skills, that's got to be another competitive advantage that I would guess not many, not many other locations around the world could match. Absolutely. I I can certainly speak to the opportunity here. Um, the transitional um, uh, expertise that's available to be able to integrate into the carbon utilization space is huge. I think that one of the biggest advantages is really understanding the process engineering of carbon capture as well as utilization to integrate into existing facilities and that expertise already exists. And so we're already seeing a large uptake, uptake and transition of that type of expertise from more the operational uh, performance side of the industry into the opportunities tied to CCUS. And I think that one of the advantages of the facility or the center itself is that it's located close to Calgary to be able to demonstrate to those folks with the expertise just how easily it can be integrated. And so we don't have to drive off to a large facility you know, up in Northern Alberta to be able to demonstrate this, that the folks that are coming that have that expertise can see it right close to the city, which has made it real. It's made it tangible. Uh, people can actually see it. And it makes a huge difference when they see the technology uh, that's converting the CO2 in person, all of a sudden things start to click. And so I think that that's really one of the advantages of bringing that expertise with the actual infrastructure together to be able to start to have more people um, changing their minds and, and actually integrating into this industry. Now, I'm going to assume, I think it's a pretty safe assumption that the that InnoTech has a five or 10 year uh, plan 
uh, for the Carbon Conversion Technology Center. Uh, where do you see it uh, in five years or 10 years? That's a great question. Um, I think from the, the short term, so the five-year type of cycle, we're really looking to be able to ensure that it's a um, variable functionality type of facility where we've got uh, industry making the most use of the carbon capture facility that Delta um, and ASCO have uh, built at the facility, as well as the um, technology developers who are doing the conversion itself. So from that perspective, in, in the short term, we want to ensure that the facility is being accessed and utilized by industry who needs to actually implement and adopt some of these technologies, as well as from technology developers that need to de-risk to ensure they're commercial ready. Um, the 10-year plan is, is still yet to be um, determined because the industry is changing so quickly. So we don't want to make too many plans that are going to take us out too far and not be adaptable enough to be able to uh, support the needs within the industry. So we're trying to be as flexible and adaptable as we can be right now. Now, uh, I often tease Albertans and I can do that because I come from Alberta and I still have friends and family there. You know, it's it's all in, in good, good spirit. But I, I tease them that the pace of change in the energy global energy system, thanks to the energy technology uh, transition, all of amazing technologies that that are driving that change. Uh, Albertans don't always have a good sense of what's going on and the pace of that change. And so I can see your point about not wanting to get too far. Don't want to get too far out in your skis because things change a lot. Um, what can you give us an example of maybe a couple of technologies that are you know kind of in the pipeline as it were. Uh, that might affect, you know, the utilization of, you know, and 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 kind of the work that's being done at your center. Yeah, I think that some of the technologies that are going to be integrated and implemented um, sooner rather than later are are primarily the fuels. I think that there's a huge opportunity for that to be able to integrate hydrogen um, with the conversion technologies. And so, from my perspective. I think that we're going to we're going to be demonstrating next year a technology that's converting um, CO2 uh, to um, uh, hydrogen fuel from the uh, concentrated CO2 stream. We're also going to be demonstrating a technology that is capturing uh, CO2 and converting it to carbon black. Um, and really, it's not carbon black, it's engineered carbon. So it's a carbon that has lots of value added ben benefits and properties. Um, from a nanotube perspective, fit for purpose into the manufacturing sector. We're also going to be um, demonstrating a technology that converts um, CO2 to DME. So replacing some of the solvents and the products that are used within the existing oil and gas industry with a more circular approach using waste to produce those technologies or those, those, um, those solvents and those fuels that are required within the the existing operations, I think that those have an opportunity to actually be de-risked, demonstrated, and implemented within a three-year time frame, which is huge because typically technology development like this is a 10-year type of uh, span. So if we can shorten that to a three to four-year time period where we can actually have these technologies replacing some of those fuels and those chemicals, then we have a win. So I think that those are the ones that are going to be demonstrated in the short term in the next two to three years for integration and implementation at industry facilities um, within before the 2030 targets, which from my perspective is a huge win. Well, that, that's fascinating. Uh, good luck with all of that work, Bonnie. We're going to follow that with great interest here at Energy Media because, uh, you know, I've, I've written columns about this. I think advanced materials is uh, based on hydrocarbons is the future of Alberta. You know, if we're looking 2050 on where we're not supposed to be burning this stuff anymore, uh, it still is a resource. It still has value. And we should be looking at ways to transition from uh, hydrocarbons as feedstock for fuel to hydrocarbons for feedstock for advanced materials. And so, uh, and, and I think your work will be front and center in that transition. So we're very interested in it. Thank you very much for this. Yeah, no, my pleasure. Thank you.